Alrighty, hello everyone. This is Dragon here. We're we'll back in my dragon stand, pull up a seat, and listen to a tale. I want to start off this podcast episode by thanking a very dear friend of mine, Miss Kayla, who is also Crimson Bones on Twitter. She created our new thumbnail and podcast image that we are using for the recording. So thank you so much, Kayla. It looks amazing. And I'm very happy to have all matching sort of artwork now for social media, YouTube, podcasts, everything. So really, really appreciate that. I also need to apologize. There will be a lot of background noise in this episode. I have waited all day to try to record this and I had to give up and accept that there will be background noise for this episode. Yep. Uh, it's that time of year in Canada. We're finally, we're over the hump of s- cold weather and snow, so lots of yard work is being done. Once again, I am so sorry, but I will try to keep my voice close to the mic and have my mic only pick up me. Now, I've explained it a little bit on Twitter, so I'll explain it here real quick. The episodes for the next few weeks will probably be a little strange or Toastmasters related, potentially education related as well, as I have a few ideas for some one-off episodes, but I'm kind of stuck doing these until I move. I will be having to pack up equipment as I go, and eventually I won't have a lot of fancy things to do this podcast with, so until the move is over and I'm settled, these episodes won't be like a series or sticking to maybe one topic. It'll be a little bit all over the place, so hopefully that'll be okay. We'll do a variety podcast for a little bit, and then we'll get back on track. So, Today, we will be talking about Toastmasters again, but we're going to lean into a different direction. Instead of speeches or personal projects and things I've learned, I will be talking to you guys about leadership roles, as it's come to my attention that a few members of my club and another club that I'm, I kind of got roped into joining at this point, uh, think that I can hit my distinguished Toastmasters in about probably two years at most, maybe even earlier. So there's been some more research and looking into Toastmasters as a whole, and I will be actually looking into taking on some more leadership roles. So I'm going to spend part of the podcast explaining all the roles that in in the executive part of the club. So these are all the leadership roles. Then I'll talk about club coaching and what does that mean and who I'll be working with for that. Then we're moving on to what I'm actually aiming to achieve when it comes to our upcoming uh, club election for the executives. So this will be kind of an interesting podcast for me. I realize that this isn't everyone's cup of tea per se, but I'm really excited to jump into leadership roles and take on more as Toastmasters really has opened my eyes a lot about myself, the goals and areas of interest I have, and I really am just enjoying this process. So taking on more has been a very exciting prospect, a little overwhelming, but exciting at the same time. So let us begin with the club executive roles. So within Toastmasters, we have our regular members, of course, and we have a regular program, and there's a lot of leadership roles and behind the scenes that isn't really shared or talked about. So the first role I will talk to you guys about is the president. So this is the executive part of the club, the membership here. So we have our regular members and we have an executive club that helps run things, creates the program, and takes care of like the behind the scenes stuff. So our first role uh, for the executive is the president. So this officer is the chief executive officer responsible for supervision and operation of the whole club. The president sets the tone for the club and provides helpful, supportive leadership for all activities. Now, the president's really interesting because I, as a member, because I've only been a member since I joined in October, I've only ever seen them as sort of the one that sets the tone for the meeting by being one of the first people to speak at the meeting, takes care of any business, any kind of, you know, important executive matters at the start, and then we move into our meeting. So they lead in that way, but I've heard that they also do a lot of other things like preparing for a club contest, making sure things are prepared, they reach out to area directors and other clubs, and just 
checks in, sees how they're doing things, gets ideas, and helps the club grow. A very important role, absolutely, to help keep our club functioning in the way that it is. So that is the role of the president. They are the first person at every single meeting usually, and they welcome guests, welcome members, and they set the tone for a lot of our meetings, programs, contests, basically everything. Every little thing that happens in this meeting is really because of the president. The next role I'll talk about here a little bit is the vice president of education. So this officer is responsible for planning successful club meetings and making sure each member has the opportunity to achieve their educational goals. The VPE is the second highest ranking club officer. So VPE, basically, they're the ones that will create the agenda for every meeting, reach out to members, make sure that they're on the right track with their goals and pathways, and find opportunities for them to work on the projects they need to work on. And they really are a driving force for most meetings. They will take the direction and the tone that the president sets and really implement it and talk and keep in touch with every single member of the club to ensure that whatever goals they have set for themselves will be met. And it's a phenomenal role and I've seen a phenomenal person do this role for our club on Saturdays. Mark, she handles it so well. She touches bases with everyone. If we have ideas, we email it to her. She'll find a way to make it happen. And she's really a huge role model for in that regards. There's a, you're a very, very busy person as a VPE, but luckily with my club as it stands, we have a really good system in place. So the person who will take over as VPE probably will smoothly kind of transition into it, have a little bit of mentoring in the role and then take it on on their own. So it's a really neat role to have for an executive because otherwise meetings would be chaos without the VPE. So I'm really, it's a role I genuinely uh, am really in awe of as a teacher as well and being part of education programs and degrees myself. So it's a really neat role. The other role, another role here for the executive club, or the executive part of the club, I should say, is vice president of membership. So this officer manages the process of bringing guests to meetings and encouraging those guests to become members. The VPM maintains a constant flow of new people into the club. So it's all about recruitment for this role. You have to reach out to people, uh, invite people to meetings, basically spread the news about the club, uh, give their information, see what the, what works for them, how comfortable they are to join a meeting, all those things. They're the very first contact for most new people to join Toastmasters, uh, or at least our club. A very important role, and they set a huge tone for newcomers. They have to be a very welcoming, genuine, kind person, one who's on top of their emails and contacts, and it's really fun to see like when new people join meetings. This is actually a position I'm not interested in. I mean, it's really cool to be that first contact, so you are in charge of the club email and all that stuff, but I don't know enough people in my life to bring to meetings regularly, so I don't think I could really do that role well at this point. So yeah, I'm, I guess I should say I'm not ready for president, VP, I might be VPPR, and I'm a little mixed about most roles, but then when I get to the part where I say these are the roles I'm running for, I'll go into a little bit more detail there. The next executive member is the Vice President of Public Relations. So the VPPR, a very long abbreviation, but a very cool abbreviation nonetheless. This officer here promotes the club in the community and notifies the media about the club news and benefits. The VPPR updates web content and social media and safeguards the Toastmasters brand identity. They're your, yeah, again, public relations officer. They're the one that will create advertisements, open house, brochures and advertisements. They will be on social media, be part of Toastmasters groups, Facebook groups, 
Uh, even we're looking into expanding to Twitter and Instagram eventually here as a Toastmasters organization. And so they're the ones that will constantly share updates, news, uh, leadership directives, things like that for the club. And they are on, they have to be on top of it. So there's a lot to that position. You have to create the materials, create the resources. You borrow the ones from the website, borrow the brand, borrow the imaging, and keep that up to date and consistent with club goals. So it's a huge role, and I think it's actually a very interesting role to have for a club, as growing and getting membership is actually quite difficult. So to have the VPM and VPPR be part, like really getting into touch with people and sharing programs, sharing resources, they're our main driving force to get club membership. So it's a really very two important roles in terms of club growth and directives and just getting people to come try out Toastmasters. The next position is the secretary. Oh man, I was a secretary for student council in high school. So this role has always been dear to my heart. In fact, my graduation ring from high school actually has clerk or a secretary on my graduation ring because that was one of the main roles I had at school. So the secretary for Toastmasters though and the way it looks for the club is this officer maintains club records, manages files, handles club correspondence, and takes the minutes at each club and executive committee meeting. So again, they clear the correspondence for the club, they will help send out information announcements, guidelines, resources uh, once directed to you, or if they feel like a resource will be helpful to be the club, they will send that out. They have to attend every club meeting, or most club meetings and executive meetings, so that they can record the minutes, the notes, and pass them along to every club member. So a very important role, Touch Your Space works really well within the club. <clears throat> sorry there we go <laughs> works really really well within the club and keeps us kind of up to date on everything going on behind the scenes they're the ones that bridge the gap between executive and member like the regular membership of the club a very very super important role that i would love to do as well <laughs> let's be honest then there's the treasurer so obviously, if you guys know anything about student councils or student elections or anything like that, they're usually the ones that take care of the finances and budgets. It's pretty similar here for Toastmasters as well. This officer is the club accountant. The treasurer manages the club bank account, writes checks when approved by the executive committee, and deposits, dues, and other club revenues. <clears throat> so they really help with the finances of things because to join Toastmasters, you do have to have, you have to pay a membership fee. So that is a huge part of it too, which means if you're feeling iffy about it, continue to go to clubs as a guest for a while. And then if you feel like this is something you really want to commit to, then you can join and pay the fee. Luckily, I think first year memberships are quite affordable in most places, in most cases, but then it gets after that, after your new membership is over, it, it gets back to regular price. So it's something to keep in mind, but of course, with all these finances coming and going, coming and going, you need a treasurer. <laughs> Plus, when it comes to when COVID's over, we have to find a venue and a place to meet where everybody can get to and think about those kinds of things as well. So the treasurer really helps with like those kinds of things. And Anytime they have an idea to spend some money for the club, for club meetings or directives, things like that, they have to get approval from the rest of the committee. So it's a really interesting role. And I'm really bad with math and money, so that's something I don't think I should do. <laughs> because I, it's a lot of responsibility and I don't want to mess up. That's basically all that means. Yeah, our next executive club member that we have, or an executive role we have, is the sergeant at arms. And yeah, it's kind of a hard role to explain, so I'll just read it word for word that I have here in the resource that I have. 
So this officer keeps track of physical inventory. The sergeant of arms arrives early to prepare the meeting place and stays after to stow all club equipment. They also begin every single meeting by setting the setting reminders and letting people know what is kind of a key housekeeping things basically. And that's at least what I've seen so far. So of course with like the pandemic there isn't really a physical inventory to keep because we're all online, we're meeting virtually, we're getting virtual awards, that kind of thing. So how the Sergeant of Arms role works online is just doing that meeting part. They are the ones that have to start the meeting on time, go through the club promise, the reminders for the entire meeting, and then introduces the president. So they're the very first part of most Toastmaster Club meetings. And then the last one here, if you're a brand new club for Toastmasters, you probably won't have this, but it is the immediate past president. They stay part of the executive community the following year, usually. So the immediate past president is this officer serves as a guide and resource to club officers and members. So they're part of the executive community to really help wherever they can to help coach someone in a new executive role, to give guidelines, to give suggestions, if the meeting gets stuck or if there's someone missing they may fill in that role. They're kind of just like that really important extra support really. If you think about gaming, they're your healer, the support class. They are there just to be a huge support force. So some clubs will have this, some clubs won't. Uh, I'm lucky that our club does have one and she's been great and has encouraged me to actually be part of this coming election. Who would have thought? <laughs> so though that is the executive committee for Toastmaster Clubs. The president, vice president of education, vice president of membership, vice president of public relations, secretary, treasurer, sergeant at arms, and immediate past president. They all play very important that rolls to the behind the scenes and direct running and operations of the club. Now, I guess because it would be kind of a weird to go to the club coaching thing, I'm going to go through and tell you about the ones that I've signed up for <laughs> because what I've realized with these le the level three projects I'm working on is that, oh my goodness, this Toastmasters program is really helping me build more healthier habit, habits and becoming a better person. I want to step up. I want to help out more. And so when I heard about the elections, I was like, I don't know what this all means and I had to look into it. So basically the Toastmaster year goes until June. So at the end of every year, we elect a new executive committee. And so this is where we're at right now. This Saturday is our elections for the club. So we currently have the we currently have nominations and people are running for various roles. And so the election will be for president, vice president, vice president education, vice president membership, vice president public relations, secretary, treasurer, and sergeant at arms. Immediate past president goes to Cornelius, who's our current club president, because that's how that works. <laughs> so the positions I'm running for. Now this is going to be really interesting. The first two positions I was really interested in running for was VPPR, so Vice President Public Relations and Secretary. And then I got a lovely email from one of our club members, Austin, and he actually, he was really sweet about it. He asked if he could nominate me for President and Vice President of Education. I was like, um, <laughs> as much as that's really sweet, what? And so he basically asked, and then we followed up the next morning in like a Zoom call. He told me to look into the positions and figure out if that would be okay, if he could nominate me for both. And so, <laughs> long story short, I am not doing the president. I'm not ready for that level of commitment yet per se, because that's a lot of really standing up and being a leader and I'm not quite ready there. I'm not, I don't quite have the confidence to be the president yet. 
Some of you may argue, like, do it, Violet, do it. Um, but I'm going to say no for this year. Maybe next year. We'll see. But the vice president of education, he, he brings up a lot of good points. I have graduated with an education degree. This would be something that would help foster my skills as a teacher, as an educator, and part of my career. And it would be a really direct kind of correlation with my goals, actually, as a teacher. Plus, I'm insanely organized. I write everything down. I like following up with people, touching base, keeping track, and helping people with their goals. So I said, yes, you can nominate me for that position. So I'm going to be... I've self-nominated myself for the, first, the other two positions, and Austin nominated me for that one. And it's really interesting. The election is a very strict process. We go through each role, starting with the highest position, going down to the lowest. And the way it works in the club meeting is that each person who has been nominated or has stood up or has self-nominated has to give a 30 second campaign speech to try to convince the members of the club to vote for them for that position. So currently we have no nominations for president. I think some people are a little anxious to kind of step up to that role, which is very fair because it is a huge, important role. But now moving into the VPE, I'm actually competing against Austin, which is hilarious. If you guys know me and Austin, we've been competing against each other quite frequently this past year since we joined Toastmasters together. And so we were teasing each other about it. But what would happen here is we go in order of name in alphabetical order, which <laughs> Violet is the worst name to have some days, but the way it works. So right now, president, we're not too sure. We might get nominated. People might get nominated for it on the day. We don't know. But for VPE, Austin would go first and he would do his 30 second speech trying to sell why he would make a great VPE, why he would, that executive position would be great for him. Then there's a little bit of a pause and a break for people to think and consider. Then I would go and give my 30 second speech. And we do that for each position basically. But after all the nominees have spoken, then we vote right after the speeches and we don't move on to the next executive member position until a decision has been made and in the event of a tie they have to vote again we vote again we don't give our speech again but we might get a chance to do additional comments or additional like i will buy you a bunch of chocolate if you vote for me or we could do something silly like that but we basically vote until the tie is broken so it's a very interesting uh, way to do an election, but that's the way it works. We do president, VPE, VPM, VPPR, secretary, treasurer, sergeant arms. And so this meeting could run very late on Saturday, but it's very exciting. And I've kind of made myself a very busy person because I'm also giving, in the regular meeting itself, I'm giving a speech based on the focus on the positives project I talked about last week. So I'm giving that speech this Saturday <laughs> and then I have to give campaign speeches depending on how results go. I could be very lucky and VPE, I could win that and then I'm good for campaign speeches. But if Austin wins it, then we move down to the next position I'm running for, which I haven't talked about yet, and that's a VPPR. Now, why am I interested in VPPR? I have so many ideas in regards to that position of ways to really get Toastmasters and the brand and the club out there. Because right now there's a huge supportive following on Facebook. There's fan groups, there's official groups, there's club groups, club pages. You can probably find Toastmasters clubs easily on Facebook. There isn't the same kind of following or use on Twitter, Instagram, uh, Tumblr, Vine, I was going to say Vine, oh I'm so sorry, uh, YouTube and things like that. So as VPPR I have so many ideas of how we can create resources and even do some editing like if we could record our club meetings and 
show snippets with, of course, permission, because VoIP is a thing. Uh, we can show snippets of people speaking to show that you can get to this point if you join Toastmasters. It's all about promotion. So I have so many ideas about that, and I love creating... Br this makes me sound like a huge nerd, but I do love making brochures and infographics, and it would be such a fun way to really help promote and grow the club. So I'm very excited for the chance, potentially, to run for that role. And this will, that also leads to club coaching here, which I'll get to uh, after my spiel about the election this Saturday. <laughs> So yeah, let's say VP, I don't win, and Austin wins. If it comes to VPPR, let's say someone else wins that position. The last one I'm running for is secretary, and I think that's pretty self-explanatory as to why I'm running for secretary. It is a role that I've done before, it's something I'm familiar with, I've done the exact same role at, at high school level, of course, now I'm working with adults, and it's a little different and more professionally based, but... It's also a way to connect with the club and be a good correspondence and form relationships and things like that too. The other roles absolutely do that too, but yeah, secretary would help with that too. Form connections, stay in touch with people, and really focus on helping the club and supporting the club by taking detailed organized notes, which is something I really do. So those are the three positions I'm potentially up for. According to some little birdies out there, VP well, might be mine, but again, it all comes down to the day of and the election itself and the campaign speeches. My goodness, I still have to write mine. I'm currently in the process of memorizing my speech for that day, so it's a chaotic mess I'm currently in and facing, but all of these positions that I want to run for, I'm absolutely dedicated to. Like VP, education, that connection, organization, connecting with members, helping others achieve goals. That's what a teacher does in their classroom or what a teacher should do. And then VPPR, again, I have many ideas to help the club grow and share events and ideas and get the brand out there. And I'm always on social media so that's another bonus there for myself and then secretary I have got the experience behind me through students union at high school I've done the role for two one and a half years there I also was able to lead in that role in many ways setting the organizational tone for the students in the following year as of course we graduated and moved on so I all I have very good reasons to run for all these positions, so it's going to be a very exciting meeting on Saturday. I'm really looking forward to it, especially to hear how others will be persuasive or try to win votes with the club. And I think most elections aren't very serious from what I gathered, at least for our club, because it seems quite silly and you can use bribery and things like that. So I have to think about that a little bit with VPE as well. How to make it fun, like what would be my bribe? <laughs> so I'm still working on it. If you have any suggestions on how I should bribe my club, let me know. I'll give you a hint, they like wine. Maybe I'll just find a way to bring in wine to this. Oh, I have an idea now. Maybe for VP, I can do that spiel about I've graduated with an education degree. I'm an extremely organized person. I believe in you and your goals and hey, when we win and celebrate you reaching a milestone or a goal, I'll get some wine and we can make a real celebration out of it. <laughs> I can do something silly like that, but yeah, I have to think about that still a little bit. Well, that's the executive leadership that most Toastmaster clubs will have, depending on the size of the club and such. It's going to be a really exciting meeting because there's definitely multiple people up for multiple roles, so we'll see how it trickles down. It'll be very fun. Now, moving on to the other part here. So, it's come to my attention. <laughs> I like how I keep saying that. It has come to my attention that 
people see me as being a pretty organized, dynamic person. And it's something that is seen as a good thing, obviously, but also for becoming or getting, sorry, becoming or getting your distinguished Toastmasters honor role, something like that. And so there's a lot of things to do to get to that point. And I've already started the process of doing it without even knowing. So I'm already, you have to complete, uh, complete one whole pathway in the Toastmasters program, which I'm over halfway done now as of Saturday. Oh my gosh, I just realized that. Wow. And you have to be a mentor and you have to become a club coach. So I'm already a mentor. I've got a protege and we're going to do our best to work well together until she has her baby. And it's been a really good working relationship between us. And yeah, then the club coach. So this is where I got roped into being committed to another club for two years. <laughs> so I've attended Core Developments. It's another Toastmasters club here in my city. Off and on basically the last few months. They really helped me prepare for the club contest. I'm making sure I got all of my steps and pathway level completion, all those things. And I haven't been able to go back for a couple months because I've always worked mornings or I've always worked Tuesdays. But I've been able to rejoin them and I've actually joined them in a very interesting time. They are currently in the process of setting a club growth plan, basically, because currently there's only about five of us in this club. And Austin, I'm always going to bring up Austin. Him and I are everywhere together, apparently. It's just, it's a thing. And he's been anointed as a club coach already for the club. And through the meeting, it was fun because I did a practice run through of my speech for Saturday, this Tuesday, and I got some feedback and everyone was really sweet about it. And I've reworked it and revamped it and I hope it's better now based on the feedback I got. But then the other part of it was Austin presenting his presentation for club growth for core development because it used to be a prominent downtown club. But then things happened, uh, people changed careers, professions, jobs, the pandemic hit, and suddenly it's just a tiny little close-knit group <laughs> at this point. And basically from what I was told, telling the club because after that uh, one of the members basically asked each one of us why do you keep coming back and so based on my answer alone and them knowing that I've been attending other small Toastmaster clubs and supporting them lately they basically like I told you voluntold that I could be a club coach because clubs can have up to two coaches in their club and it's very interesting Austin has like a really analytical strong goals set for the club based on his plan and he really went into detail a lot about the marketing the brand getting workshops started really inviting finding ways to invite students uh, businesses organizations to attend the club if people need some confidence boost and want to make or make connections and network and then I gave the ideas about social media marketing and platforming as that's something I'm really into and based on me revealing that I got fallen told hey why don't we sign you up as a club coach for a core development pilot and I was like okay <laughs> sure and so we're in the process of getting that sorted but it's really exciting to do this because as a club coach, you're there to kind of um, guide clubs into the direction they want to go. So for Court of Adelant, we want to, we have, they have a very unique style of club meeting, basically. And it's really interesting to hear what it used to be versus where we want to get to. And Austin has a two-year plan and he's got like 
checkpoints throughout the year, but throughout the two years, one year, halfway through, quarterly check-ins. Very organized guy. I really appreciate that for him. But there's definitely, I see holes a little bit in his plan that I think I could fill. So one hole is he brought up trying to market to universities and students in very specific limited programs. So nursing, pharmaceuticals, business, administration, business itself, engineering, clubs and sales, marketing, you know, those kinds of programs at university would be great for Toastmasters to step in and say, hey, we can help you with those skills. But then I told him after the meeting, you're missing a whole potential for education students. Because my experience as an ed student, I was not good at public speaking at all throughout my entire degree until the very last two semesters where that was my practicum and I had to stand up in front of students and teach and talk to them and hopefully not look like a fool. And so I think reaching out to education programs and helping students find their voice and get that confidence and also realizing that the different elements of Toastmasters, like the evaluation part of it, public speaking, the leadership roles, these kinds of things have a huge direct connection to teaching and education as a whole. So I have a feeling that Austin will have me head that part of it and reaching out to the programs like education programs, um, leadership programs, those kinds of things as well. And seeing if we can get involved with and post things at the U of A or other colleges, universities here in the city to reach out for people to attend meetings. And yeah, it's really interesting that I popped up with that idea immediately. I also gave Austin the idea too that we really need to let even other Toastmaster clubs and others know that we have a unique format that's different from your typical Toastmasters meeting. We do a triad system where instead of breaking down the meeting into prepared speeches, table topics, and evaluations, we go introdu we introduce the speaker, the speaker speaks, and evaluation. Then we move into the next triad, introduction, speaker, evaluation. Next triad, do, do, do. Then we move into the table topics. After, so it's a very unique system, very different from most other clubs, and we have the potential to keep making it unique and different. Austin and I have been throwing around the idea of maybe trying a debate style table topics where we organize the club into two teams and then we give them a topic to debate about on the spot. So we have the potential for a very unique way to run a club and I think we need to definitely brand and market it that. So core development is a very unique place to be a part of and something I really love. Don't like the fact that it's an 8am meeting is quite early and will be hard to market. But if we can reach the university students, we can say, hey, this can be an hour before your class starts, where you can give yourself a sense of confidence before you go about your day and learn more about what you want to do in life and achieve. So there's so many different ways we can market it and spin it. Then I have come up with the idea of helping them get their Facebook page back, get our website organized, cleaned up, tidied up, updated, because it isn't quite updated. Not for a while, at least. <laughs> and I really get that going so then I can start doing word of mouth on Facebook about, hey, core development's in the process of rebranding, revamping, and building itself up again. If you'd like to see what we've done or where we are right now, let, let us know and I can send you an invite to the meeting at 8 a.m. on Tuesday mornings. So I want to start doing that, but I think we're not quite there yet. We have June basically to kind of get these little things done, the administrative side, the updates and all that kind of stuff done. Then we can kind of really start doing that. So. That's where I'm going to come in as a club coach. I'm going to help coach them through setting up some workshops because I have ideas for workshops based on our unique backgrounds <laughs> that we have. I have ideas for um, what organizations and what areas of 
interest, we can reach out to you. So education, leadership, marketing, sales. There's so many different things that I can see Toastmasters helping people with. And then I have the social media, the PR side of it kind of on lockdown and how I can help with that. So that is a lot of Toastmasters leadership. And it's so exciting. I think earlier this week when everything kind of got dropped on me, like, hey, I'm going to nominate you for VPE and hey, you're going to become a club coach. I was sitting there going, oh God, that's a lot of responsibility. Oh no. <laughs> but now that I have time to think about it, let it set in and really absorb it, I'm very excited for this. Is it a job? Is it a paid job? No, it's all voluntary. It's all things that I want to do based on my goals. And these are skills that I want to develop and learn more even as well, because I have no idea how to network. I don't even know what it means to network. So doing some of these things through the mentoring, the executive roles, the club coaching, I get to learn these skills and things that I want to develop and they directly correlate to my pathway and some of the projects I have in mind with my pathway. So it's a really exciting, interesting time to have. I'm going to be extremely busy, but I think it's really, it's the time to do this. I'm not really, I'm not teaching right now. I haven't been able to get a position back in the classroom online or online or in person at all for like 15 months now. So I think it's time, I have the time now to sit here and go, okay, I can't get a teaching job right now, but I can focus on Toastmasters, the leadership side of it, the club coaching, the networking, build these skills up, build my confidence back up. And then when the time comes for me to return to the classroom and teach, I will be a better teacher. I will be more set up for success than jumping back in with half confidence with my foot like half in the door half out the door feeling a little skittish and nervous to kind of get back in the classroom so it's a it's interesting that this has really become this huge part of my life I didn't expect it my first meeting I joined in September I was like this is a little scary and intimidating, but I think I'm down for it. The second meeting I joined as a guest, okay, no, I think I need this. To me becoming a member the next week and the club and then my experiences with the club contests, with mentoring now, these executive roles, the club coaching, my pathway, all of these projects and things that I've got lined up for me. I am genuinely excited for. Am I nervous for burnout? A little, because burnout's never a fun feeling. I've hit that many times throughout university and in, in my life. But I think what's different about this commitment to all these things is that these are things I absolutely want to do and I have passion for it. So the burnout, when it happens, it won't be a cold turkey, quit everything, run away and hide. It's going to be more like, okay, I need to take maybe two to three weeks off from leadership type activities and be a member, you know, and just kind of step down in that way for like a small period of time and then pick it right back up. So there's, it's crazy. I just realized that I've got all of these commitments, these plans, these strategies, and then I even have a strategy for burnout, which is crazy because that shows you how committed I am to this and, step, and stepping up and learning more about leadership, more about networking, more about being a huge support for the club and for other clubs and really stepping up and growing more than I ever thought I would. So, yeah, I think that's the final thoughts for this podcast episode. A little shorter than most episodes, but again, I'm kind of just filling in for a little while here. But this was actually fun to do, recording and finally talking about all of this. Uh, 
even if no one listens to this, it's really nice to get this off my chest and realize the potential I have for Toastmasters, for myself, for others, and for my future, really. So, yeah, hopefully you guys got that vibe from this and how excited I am. I think to end this episode, I'm actually going to go through my speech that I have prepared for Saturday just to get one more practice in here and to extend the episode a little longer because why not, right? So I'm going to get that speech and we're going to do this. And I'll tell you right now, the title of my speech is Reframing Negativity into Gratitude. So that is the title of the speech. And here we go. Got to get my notebook ready. Well, I am derping on the pages here. All right. I'm going to take a note of the time because I do have to time myself for this speech. And I'm going to begin right now. There is one thing in life most people aim to achieve one day. Happiness. Even in moments where life tests and tries you, that is the one thing we crave or need. This was something I have realized quite frequently with the amount of change I've experienced in just this single year alone. Yet, happiness hasn't been present in my life that often, leaving me wondering, how do I become more happy? How do I become more of a positive person? Fortunately, one of my level three electives aimed to aid in such ideas called focus on the positives. Similarly structured to the emotional intelligence project, the past two weeks I've had to keep a journal but focus on these three key aspects. What were the positives for today? What were the negatives for today? And what are three things you are grateful for? Beginning this project was surprisingly easy. The first few days were used to build this type of journaling into a habit. I set aside 20 to 30 minutes each night to ensure I focused on each aspect of the project in detail. This focus and dedication to the project ended up being a relatively relaxing end of the day activity and I felt a sense of pride when able to identify positives such as teaching a full class online, enjoying a walk in nature, and spending more time with others. Identifying things to be grateful for took a bit more time to think of at the start as some things felt small or less important, such as being grateful for organization, playing a game I liked, or enjoying enjoying takeout after an extremely busy and exhausting day. Yet, before this project, I wouldn't have known how much these things lifted my mood. The project started quite well getting into a routine of journaling and really paying attention to the positivity and gratitude aspects of the project. Things shifted and became challenging around the mid point of this project. Day nine hit me hard as in the span of five hours of constant discussion and negotiation my sister and I were told we had to move. This move caused a lot of stress and negativity for me, as this would be move number four in 14 months, move number two in four months. Constant change like this makes one feel exhausted, stressed, and overwhelmed at things, at times. All things I still am currently monitoring and nurturing. On the day the decision was made, I couldn't find a lot to be positive about, as 
Relocating has its cost in regards to time, energy, and financially. However, I managed to take note of one positive, my sister, for her organization, asking all the right questions, and reassuring me that it will all work out. Despite the bump in the project, I managed to get back on track as plans were made and I was able to refocus on the aspects of the project again. I realized towards the end of the project that I wasn't really reframing the negatives of every day simply by identifying what was negative. While still doing this part of the project, I decided to add more to just stating what was negative. I also wrote what was a good thing or a positive about these negatives. For example, I had a friend of mine no show to a coffee date during the project. Definitely a disappointing event, but a positive from this? I had some downtime to relax and not work on anything for the first time all week. By reworking the project in this way, I gained more ways to keep positive or think positively, even in unfortunate, disappointing, or stressful situations. Between the Emotional Intelligence Project and now the Focus on the Positives Project, I am able to see notice and recognize more happiness in my life. I normally wouldn't have handled any of these situations well, choosing to self-isolate, not ask for help, or even let the negativity linger or stew in it longer than I needed to. Do I still fall into these habits? Yes, I am only human after all. However, I can now recognize how I am feeling, see a brighter side to most situations, and ensure I choose better ways to handle what life throws at me. I am enjoying the process of becoming a better person through these projects, challenging myself with new activities and outlooks on life, and by being very grateful for all of you and for Toastmasters itself. Boom, that's the speech. So, yeah, and a lot of the things I said there at the end are true. And you guys heard it here as well as I explained the leadership roles. I am grateful for this program and how much I am learning, growing, and really becoming a better person. So, yeah. That is me. That is the project. That's the last speech for the project. And then, boom, I move on to my next level three elective. I have the election coming up this weekend, and I can't wait to report back on that next week. I'll do one more episode of Toastmasters, I promise, next week, and then we'll move on to some education stuff because I've got a bone to pick with education lately, and I can't wait to share that bone with you. That sounded weird. I apologize. I'm still an awkward bean. Nothing will change about that. But thank you all so much for listening to me ramble about Toastmasters again. Hopefully you find the leadership aspects of it a little interesting and intriguing. And you enjoyed my speech. I actually hit just under six, under seven minutes in that one. So I'm glad that read through hit my goal there for timing. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed your drinks by the fire, enjoyed the stories and the explanations, and I can't wait to see you next week for the podcast episode or in Stardew on Monday. Take care, everyone, and we will see you later. Bye-bye.